Thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm going to focus on why and how the cover crop nitrogen credit needs to change to reflect the science and to ensure the success of the ag order. I look forward to your questions, but I ask you to hold those to the end until I've finished my 10 minutes. I'm going to use this timeline to tell you a story as I present my case. It begins about 20 years ago in a hotel room in Salinas the night before I interviewed for my current job. Now, I didn't know much about commercial scale vegetable production, and I thought that cover crops might be important. So I was actually sitting on the bed reading this book, Cover Crops for Clean Water. Clean water. That's really what the ag order is all about. Fast forward. I've been in the job for more than 15 years. I've conducted short and long-term studies on many different aspects of cover crops. And I asked myself the question, can we grow vegetables sustainably without cover crops? I addressed that question in this paper that I published. It's a complex question, and in 10 pages, I concluded that the answer is no. And that's really why I'm here to talk with you today. Fast forward to last year, I received an email from the staff of the Water Board asking me for input on the Ag Order. We had two very good meetings, and I remember one of the first things I told the staff was that I was glad that it was their job to come up with this complex but very important regulation, not mine. <laughs> I know it's a difficult task, and I appreciate what you've done. Fast forward to January of this year, when the revised Ag Order was made public. That was actually the first time that I read it in detail, and I have to say I was extremely impressed with how comprehensive it was, how much effort you'd obviously put into it, and I would actually give you an A-plus for that. But I had some major concerns with the cover crop parts because I didn't think that they reflected well in the science. And in that regard, I'd give you a B-minus or maybe just a C, and that's why I'm here to help. We need to get the cover crop part of the ag order up to an A plus for the ag order to succeed. So in February, myself and several colleagues wrote a letter expressing our concerns. Fast forward to just last week when we received the response to our comments. It was discouraging because one of our most important suggestions, which was to increase the credit for cover cropping, was not accepted. I would actually give us an F for our inability to convince you to increase the credit. Now, I understand why you didn't agree with us. You were concerned about the potential for leaching from a cover crop once it was incorporated into the, into the soil. That's an important issue that we should have addressed in our letter. So I started thinking, how are we gonna to respond to this? I was getting emails from people and I said, you know what, just give me a little bit of time to think about this. So I went back to the Ag Order and I looked at it very carefully. And in the process, all of a sudden I felt like I got hit in the head with a hammer and a light bulb went off. I couldn't believe what my colleagues and I had missed. Let me tell you what it was. So this is a table from the Ag Order that shows the scientific basis for the discount factor that's applied to organic fertilizers. It's based on a very common metric the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Now we've known for decades that the carbon to nitrogen ratio of a material, whether it's a cover crop or an organic fertilizer, is an excellent predictor of nitrogen mineralization or release into the soil. It's also a good predictor of the nitrogen leaching risk. Let me explain this with some data from my long-term study where I've got a rye cover crop. So on the horizontal axis, we've got the C2N ratio, and on the vertical axis, we have the nitrogen concentration. You can see that as the nitrogen concentration goes down, the C2N ratio goes up. You can also see that as the cover crop develops, you know, from these red dots in December to the yellow and then to the green dots, that's as the cover crop is maturing, the C2N ratio goes up. Now notice that the time that we actually terminated our cover crop the C to N ratio, where these green dots, it was greater than 20. That's when the cover crop is, you know, three months old or so. Now the C to N ratio of 20 is a very important number. It's kind of like a tipping point because material with a C to N ratio greater than 20 is not likely to leach nitrogen. Whereas material with a C to N ratio less than 20 is more likely to leach nitrogen. Now let me show you how we can use this information to determine a scientifically sound 
nitrogen credit for the cover crop. All right, so here are the two existing requirements in the Ag Order for a cover crop to qualify for the nitrogen credit. The first is focused on growing the cover crop during the winter when leaching is most likely to occur. And the second focuses on getting enough biomass to scavenge a large quantity of nitrate that otherwise would leach into the groundwater. Now keep in mind that we're talking about non-legume cover crops here, things like rye and mustard. Okay, so to reduce the risk of leaching from cover crop residue that's incorporated into the soil, I propose that we add a third requirement, and that is that the cover crop shoots have to have a C to N ratio that's 20 or more. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we can take the information from this table that's already in the Ag Order, from the figure that I talked about a little bit ago, and from the proposed change that I just mentioned, and use this to come up with a fair and scientifically sound cover crop nitrogen credit for farmers. I'm going to walk you through this step by step. Okay, so first of all, let's assume that the board has accepted this proposed change that the C to N ratio has to be 20 or more. Okay, now I'm going to show you how this would work with a cover crop that has four and a half thousand pounds of shoot biomass and a C to N ratio of 20. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine how much nitrogen is in the cover crop. In other words, how much nitrogen did the cover crop scavenge and prevent from leaching? So to do that, we take the C to N ratio, we go down to our figure, and we can go up to the calibration curve, and we see that a cover crop with a C to N ratio of 20 has 2% nitrogen, and we go back over to our 4,500 pounds. 2% 2 of 4,500 pounds is 90 pounds of nitrogen in the cover crop shoots. That makes sense, right? Okay, next we go over to our table to determine the appropriate credit based on the C to N ratio of 20. Now, what you might notice is the table only goes down to a C to N ratio of 15. That's okay. We're gonna use a discount factor for 15 because it's actually more conservative. All right, we do a little bit of very simple math and we determine that the cover crop nitrogen credit should be 97% of the cover crop shoot nitrogen. In this scenario, for that cover crop with 4,500 pounds of biomass and a C to N ratio of 20, that's 87 pounds. This is a scientifically sound, defensible, and conservative way to calculate the cover crop nitrogen credit. It's not a one-size-fits-all metric like the 30 pounds that's already in the existing ag order. Now, it's also really critical for me to point out that this is also an extremely attractive carrot that will incentivize cover cropping to help ensure that the ag order will succeed in reducing nitrate leaching into the groundwater. So in summary, here are the two things that the board needs to do. First, the board needs to require a C to N ratio of 20 or more. And second, you need to follow the process that I just outlined there to determine a cover crop nitrogen credit. If these two things are adopted, the cover crop part of the ag order will get a grade of A+. I look forward to answering any questions that you might have, and I'm willing to work with you 24-7 to make sure that this critical change is made to the ag order. Thank you very much.